So we now have a third victim ID confirmed. Uh, Michigan State University police, I'm told, announcing that Ariel Anderson, a junior from Michigan, from the state of Michigan, is the third person killed. That is in addition to the other two students that we know died, according to officials. Those are junior Alexandria Werner and sophomore Brian Frazier. And we know from Werner's public school system that she went through growing up that she is described as a tremendous student, athlete, leader, and exemplifying kindness every day of her life. So we are getting more insight into these young lives that were cut short by a gunman who police say shot and killed people, killed three people, injured five more. And we know that four of those people who were injured underwent surgery. Five people still in the hospital in critical condition at last word. We've spoken with students and families here in East Lansing today. Here's what some students told us about what this experience has been something that is all too familiar for their generation. That's three people in my family. That's three people who I care about. Um, that's three people who, whose extended family aren't going to see them any, anymore. Um, at this point, I think all of us are numb to the whole situation. We have lived this our entire lives. It shouldn't be that we are having to protect ourselves by barricading doors, hiding in basements. We have to be calling our loved ones and not wanting to hang up the phone because we're not sure if it's the last time we'll talk to them. Separately, we met a family, two parents who came to be with their daughter today to take her home with them uh, so she could get away from this for some time at least. And the mother made uh, a point that just stays with you and is just a reminder of what was lost here. She was able to come here to be with her daughter, to hopefully comfort her daughter and take her home and care for her for a while. But as that mother pointed out, there are three families, three sets of parents who cannot do that for their children because their children have been killed, Katie. Yeah, so, so tired of talking about these stories and hearing about these families who will never be the same. Um, and explanations don't really matter here, Tom, because you can explain it away, but it's still happening. Right. The investigation is still ongoing with this guy who, you know, is kind of out of the pattern that we normally see an mm -hmm. older man, 43-year-old, right. not affiliated with the university. What are you finding out? Yeah, I mean, typically, and you and I have discussed this uh, too many times uh, before, the, usually we have somebody who's a student or somebody who perhaps went to a school or has some sort of ties uh, to the crime, to the mass shooting, and we don't initially see that here. To your point, he is deceased, so that makes motive a little bit uh, more difficult. I think one of the things that they might look at is, according to our colleagues at NBCNews.com, he was found to have a gun on him in 2019, admitted to it, originally charged with a felony. And if, in fact, um, uh, he ended up pleading to a misdemeanor of having that gun on him, if that case had gone forward and he pleaded to the felony, it would have been illegal for him to have possessed this gun or to obtain one, according to Michigan law. So that's something that might be looked at as to why was that felony charge knocked down to a misdemeanor. There's more reporting to be done, and undoubtedly, uh, people that were involved in that case will take a look at that as well. Uh, as far as other circumstances that might tie uh, him to this, uh, it's a little difficult to say at this point why he specifically chose that school, although he did possess a note, and uh, conceivably investigators will provide more information about that uh, in the days to come and whether or not he spoke specifically to this type of incident. But he was also potentially targeting a New Jersey school? Right. So in that note, he had a reference to Ewing Township, New Jersey, which is about 70 miles southwest of us here in New York City. And at some point, he lived there. The police chief put out a, a letter to the community today. They canceled class. Uh, apparently, no uh, sort of tie to that community currently. They did note he had a history of mental illness. Again, speaks to why he was in possession of this uh, particular gun at this time or was in possession of one back in 2019. Did anybody throw the flag on that. Michigan does have some laws that would prohibit somebody who they think would be a danger to themselves or others, a type of red flag law. Uh, so that, again, raises more questions. But apparently there was a threat uh, to this school in New Jersey. Obviously, he's deceased. There's no longer a threat. And the school uh, is anticipated to be back in session tomorrow.